On a beautiful late summer afternoon for football, we welcome you to Heinz Field in the steel city of Pittsburgh, PA. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one between the Seattle Seahawks and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Two teams more than ready to get this one started. And we are underway from Heinz Field. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Seahawks offense here set to take over with Russell Wilson leading the way. Wilson a pro bowler five times in his seven NFL seasons, including last year when he threw for a career-high 35 touchdowns to just seven interceptions. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. Defense. A free five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. A boost here to start the drive. After the penalty, it's first and five. Here's Wilson. And the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Eight yards on the pickup there, and it moves the sticks. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. From the shotgun, Wilson. Oh, he got position on him, and he pulls it in. First down, Seattle, 16 yards the game there. Brandon, I think we can see early on they're making a concerted effort to get him the football. So to me, that means they like the matchup that they have. They feel like he's better than the guys that are covering him. Two plays, two passes. We'll see if they go back to that well. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. This is Chris Carson, 1,000-yard rusher a year ago. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Stephon Tuitt, the one that got him down. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. And one of the big bodies helping out this offense is your boy, Upati. And all he wants to do is have running plays called, fire out, and smack people. Six yards on the pickup, and it'll be third down. I like it, I like it, I like it. Get everyone involved in the passing game, and you know you can create those great mismatches throwing it to your guys out of the backfield. And on the first drive, that can also help establish some rhythm, right? I think so. It gets everyone involved. They feel like they're part of it. It really gets them amped up as they go forward. The pickup there, five yards. On first down, Wilson. Looking left side of him, he's got a man. That's Carson. It's a four-yard pickup, and it'll be a second down. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out firing the four for four on the opening drive. They like that. <laughs> they don't just like it. They love it because now everyone gets locked in. Your confidence jumps up. Everyone's easy about what they're doing out there. And by the way, they look at the sidelines thinking themselves and expressing. Let's keep throwing it. We're doing pretty well. He's got the tight end, Vanette. And he will have the first down, but he winds up paying for it pretty good. And that'll be enough to keep the drive moving forward. Another first down on the pickup of five yards. Wilson going to lead his guys up first and ten. And he's a perfect five for five here to begin the game. Oh, he tries to get it to Metcalf, but it's intercepted. Joe Hayden, the veteran with a pick. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Big Ben and the Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 11. This is a guy who made a Pro Bowl in his second season, James Conner. And some room for him there as he'll take this up to about the 15. Making the stop that time, Bobby Wagner. To throw on second and six, Roethlisberger. And he connects with Vance McDonald. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. 12 yards there and a first down. 
I do believe we'll see a little bit more of this as this game progresses because when you can have that type of a game in the middle of the defense, it hurts them in so many ways because most teams like to be strong down the middle. And if you can sting them there, that opened things up for him on the outside as well. That's where he, their big tight end, is so good. That middle third, the seam routes, the in routes. Yeah, you're right. Probably see more of that. Yeah, it takes a lot of courage and fortitude to go in the middle as well. <laughs> and he's got it. Juju, there's definitely a positive spirit about that man. You know, he was, I know you know this story, but he was asked in training camp by a fan to sign his head next to a tattooed Steelers logo. Not a piece of paper on his head. No. Sign his head. Sign his head. And then later, Juju told reporters he'd give game tickets to that fan if he got it tattooed. Well, he did. And Juju came through with not only game tickets, but season tickets for the fan. Well, there is a positive spirit about him, as you said. He does give good Juju out there, and the fans feel it. In fact, in another practice session, he took part in a gender reveal because the fans asked him, hey, can you come over and help us out with this? He said, sure. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, it's a boy. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Different pass rushes are designed for different things. Sometimes you want to keep the quarterback in the pocket. Sometimes you want him to flush. I don't know exactly how this one was designed, but they made sure they moved him to his right. He got out of the pocket. Unfortunately for him, he was hit as he tried to throw the ball, and that resulted in an incompletion. The tackle made by K.J. Wright. It'll be a nickel look here for the Seahawks on third down. From midfield now, here's Roethlisberger. And unable to connect, incomplete. Well, give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant a flag. No, I'm with you. There was con. And look at this, it's a fake. And this is caught. And a fake will work. He's going to have a first down. What a play. It's a first down as they get 19 yards on the fake punt. And I don't know what the method is to know when to dial up a fake punt, when not to, whatever the method there, it worked for. I think you actually did explain it. There is no method. It's just a feel, a sense, and a healthy dose of guts in order to call that play in that situation. Element of surprise, I guess, right? Yeah, element of surprise and just a strong belief that, hey, we're going to get it done. Defense. The officials so cognizant of that call nowadays, but that one looked pretty easy. Yeah, you're right. They took out of their hands having to wonder whether it's a 5-yard or a 15-yard inadvertent or not. Now, and he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. Taking it in from 14 yards out. And they are able to strike first here on their opening drive. And they're able to run it in. It started with a battle in the trenches. They won there, and they got in for six points. And that's going to be a tough one for the defense to deal with. They've got to go to the bench now and figure out how we're going to slow down this running game because on that particular play, they had no answer. Boswell on now to kick this one away. This fielded at the two. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. Of course, they'd like to forget the ending, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. So one play, and they're already just shy of midfield. Now we've got whistles and movement up front. I think this is against Seattle. Big Dwayne Brown, the tackle, guilty there. A full start, backs him up five, first and 15. Now it's Carson, and an alley to run. Call it a gain of 12, but of course not a first down due to the previous penalty. 
Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid game. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits, and leaves creases that they were able to exploit right there. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. He was trying to go back to Moore there, and it's third and short. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Now it's Wilson. He's got Lockett. He's got a first down and more inside the 30. And all the way in, touchdown Seattle. Tyler Lockett, 45 yards, as they are now on the board here in the first half. And that is the definition of yards after catch. They go short on the pass, and the receiver does the rest. Seems so harmless, doesn't it? To throw it underneath, a short pass like that. But boy, it gets dangerous in the hands of the right receiver as he makes a move and takes it to distance. Jason Myers now for the extra point. It's good, and we're all tied at seven apiece. Just a four-play drive that time. And the Seahawks capping it off with a touchdown. So all even at seven now as they kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Football going over to the Pittsburgh Steelers here. And you think about 2019 coming up. The Killer Bees, it's now just down to the Killer Bees, singular, because you got Le'Veon Bell, he's in New York, Antonio Brown in Oakland, and Ben Roethlisberger, he's the one that's left, Charles. I keep hearing from my scouts around the league that Ben Roethlisberger's having a heck of a camp. It's a lot quieter in Pittsburgh, as you might imagine, right? A lot of the hubbub has died down, but he's playing well. And we saw last year James Conner filled in quite capably, went to the Pro Bowl in Le'Veon Bell's stead. And Juju Smith-Schuster, he was the number two receiver for Pittsburgh last year. Now he has to become the number one with Antonio Brown in Oakland. We'll see how he handles that, but the talent is there. And I love Jalen Samuels, a hybrid-type player out of the backfield in the slot. Dante Moncrief and James Washington have to make the biggest jumps out on the perimeter in order for Pittsburgh to still operate as they have on offense. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. On first and ten is Connor. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. A big chunk on the ground there, 27 yards. They went with the nickel look defensively, so they had five defensive backs in there. Didn't help them stop the run. Yeah, I love that. The nickel look, five sets, five DBs. But what also happens then, you take a big body off the field in order to insert that guy. So you're taking a big off for a little. And oftentimes, you can run the football effectively against that defense. Here we go, here we go. On second down, Samuels. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball. And that way, you often control the game. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. He's such a good route runner, shows it there on third down, very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's gonna have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot and they connected there and picked up a first down. They'll run here with Connor. Uses the stiff arm. And a nice pick up there as he'll take it from the 10 down to the five yard line. Well, Brandon, we always know that once you score one touchdown, you you're, two. <laughs> you're without a doubt. And so far today, he's got one, but was denied as he tried to get the second one. And he's going to get him about three yards closer. He's down to about the two. Two straight shots on the ground. Now on third, do you go to the air? I think the possibility exists. And if you're doing it, you're probably going play action since you ran it twice. But I often think that second down is a time you go play action and throw the ball. I say commit to the run and think about it being four down territory. 
We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman. He's in Orlando, and he'll have our EA Sports halftime. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. James Conner with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Steelers have taken the lead. And always a good first half when you can hit pay dirt twice. And it never hurts to have that good feeling as the game moves on. Just think about halftime. If, if that's is all he gets, he'll just sit there at the half and think, all right, two already. I can get some more. I can get some more. And it'll be encouraging his offensive line to create some space. Extra point put through by Boswell. And that makes the score 14-7. to That time, a nine-play drive. And it was a touchdown run by James Conner that was the exclamation mark. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Fielded about a yard deep. He'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense at Summit. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly. Wilson hit. It's loose. It's out. Fumble. And it's picked up by the Steelers. And he takes it back to the house. A fumble recovery for the Steelers' score. So the defense forces the fumble, they get the score, and a guy on defense becoming offensive there, Charles. And you know they love that. Any guy on defense loves to pick up the ball and have it in his hands and try and score himself. In this case, that's exactly what happened. He'll be singing in the shower post game. Extra point now by Boswell. It's good, and it is now 21-7. to The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll wind up about four yards shy of where he would have been if he had taken a knee as he'll start at the 21-yard line. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. And let's just say they're going to be looking to start over on this drive. A few moments ago, they were in the exact situation, but their first play led to a fumble that was returned for six. Yeah, you definitely have to have a short memory to play in the NFL. you got to remember what you did wrong so you don't repeat it. But you can't dwell on it because then you will repeat it. And that's what you don't want to do. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Now Wilson. The Seahawks moving pretty well through the air. Another first down. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. Second and ten now. Wilson under pressure, and he will go down. Sacked back at the 46. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. To throw is Wilson. Left side complete to Lockett. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. Timing is everything, and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this time it paid off for them. Worked him to the center of the field, cut it to the outside, ball's delivered, gets both feet down for the completion. Heading back out there, Jalen Samuels. A good job in the passing game, decent job in the running game, but really they've been more effective uh, through the air. We'll see if that shifts at all as this goes on. Thus far, it feels like they're calling this game in reverse. Normally you run to set up the pass. Here it feels like they're passing, hoping to set up the run and be more effective later on in the game. Yeah, you can do it both ways. We usually talk about it in the reverse, however. No doubt about it. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. Roethlisberger will throw. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. 
Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field and popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. And the Steelers on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and nine. Now it's Roethlisberger. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. 23 yards, the final tally. Nice job, nice patience right there. Put him on the right side, let him work his way across, put the ball in his hands and let him work his way upfield with a catch. On first down, it's Roethlisberger. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it. If you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock the out away and bring up second down. And he comes back with one complete. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Let's go, defense. Let's get off the field, defense. Final play of the half. It's Roethlisberger. Flushed out right. And he's going to go down. Couldn't get a throw off with the pressure. Maybe that was for the best, as that brings us to the end of this first half of play. So time for the second half as the Steelers have the lead and they will also be receiving the football here to start the third quarter. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he's able to get it across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down at the 21-yard line. The Steeler offense now with a football first here to begin the third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Again, it's counter. And he'll get this from the 25 to the 30 for a pickup of five. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, put a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. And this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack. And guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. They'll run on first down. Connor, and he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Now they'll throw it with Roethlisberger. Oh, and a bad throw there. It's intercepted. He's picked off near his own 48. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. So a pick six there out of the nickel package. They went with five DBs. Almost becoming the base package in the NFL is the nickel. Hard to throw against. That was demonstrated one more time. A pick six going the other way. Myers connects on the PAT, and they're back with it, a touchdown at 21-14. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they throw the pick six, they'll get another shot at it now, as this one's in the air. This is taken about seven yards deep, and no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. James Conner and the Steelers ready to get their next drive going. He is hoping to find the end zone for a third time, and we sit now in the third quarter. 
and nothing would excite him more. But I think even more so, his offensive line. Anytime you've got a guy scoring that many times, that means you've done a really nice job in front of him. They're always giving props to the big fellas up front. It's always a good idea. This is a massive man. Here's Samuels again. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. It's a first down on a gain of 10. A couple of very nice carries to start this drive out. Yeah, two first downs. And how about that second one? What a nice run on that particular play. I'm telling you, they're going to start to think that this game is easy if they continue to rip off yardage like this. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. Boy, where would these guys be without his performance on the ground? That puts him over 100 yards now for the afternoon, and I tell you, he seems to be getting stronger as the day goes along. And the Seahawk defense gets to him, and they bring him down. So if we recount real quick, he had the touchdown earlier, and now he comes up with the sack here. No doubt about it, he's having himself a game. On second down, Connor looking for space. They get just a yard back there, and now they'll be looking at a tough third and 15. But we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers at reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. So they'll play the field position game here as a very nice punt is going to pin them back. Yeah, it's almost like watching a game of tennis. Or do you prefer ping pong? You know, back and forth like that? That definitely was excellent, wasn't it? The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. Well, they're going to have to go at least 50, 60 yards here if they want to ensure that they don't have to punt the ball like they did last time. Yeah, so what you're saying is we're not playing to just get out of the shadow of your own goal line, right? You're playing to make sure the punter doesn't see the field again. So it's not picking up a couple of first downs. You want to pick up five or six first downs and make sure you move the ball into their territory. From the 16, Wilson. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. They'll try and run for it with Penny. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. On is the punt team now as this one's sent away. Here's Switzer. A good return there, 17 yards. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Here's James Conner now as he trots back onto the field. He's up over 100 yards, and he'll be looking to get in the end zone again. Has a tremendous nose for it, doesn't he? The ability to pile up yardage and find the end zone, that's a combination you want in your runner. Yeah, it's a combination any coach wants, and we'll see if he can find that end zone once more. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. James Conner, the running back, his intended receiver. But it's going to be second down. Well, Charles, if you think so far the early part of the preseason, who has stood out? If you take a peek back at the draft, it really the first round it was pretty defensively minded. But there were three quarterbacks taken, Kyler Murray first, Daniel Jones sixth, Dwayne Haskins 15th. Of those guys, they've looked pretty good. I agree with you, Brandon. When you talk about those three quarterbacks, and you're right, the rest of the draft, we're talking about big linemen, right? We're talking about defensive players, not a lot of skilled players in the first round. But let's take the quarterbacks very quickly. Kyler Murray, by acclamation, went to Arizona. Everyone excited about it. And I think his team remains excited about his prospects. They're eager to see him play. He became the starter as soon as he was drafted. Daniel Jones, that was a different situation in New York. The fans weren't real excited about him coming in. But the reason they drafted him has a similar demeanor and talent to Eli Manning. And he's acquitting himself quite nicely in the early going. And Dwayne Haskins a little more up and down in Washington. But they love the big arm of this guy. And he's back at home. Remember, he grew up in Potomac, Maryland. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. That burst, good 
for 20 and a first down. Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? Burst seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball. Again. Oh, no, he lost the football. And they will take over at the 26-yard line. I know when you're looking at the scoreboard clock, we're, we're getting near the end of this game, but they were in what was really called four-minute offense, and that's practice, meaning taking care of the football, taking time off the clock, not giving them a chance to come back. But bottom line is, what did I say in the beginning? Taking care of the football. That didn't happen. Didn't do it a costly turnover. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive, first down. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Steps away. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. All right, partner, I'm a defender, but I've got to express my admiration there. Moving around, making it happen, and instead of worrying about protecting himself, he goes and gets the first down. I've got to give it to him on that one. Normally, you don't want your guy taking shots, your quarterback, but it's winning time here in the fourth quarter. If he needs to make those plays with the legs, go ahead, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. It's at this stage of the game, all protections, they're off. No gain on the play there. It'll be second down. Looking to throw again on second down. Wilson to the right side and complete to Metcalf. Oh, no, he lost the football. And it's picked up by the Steelers. And he brings it back to right around the 26-yard line. We have seen this before, and we know coaches preach about this and work on it all the time. Catch the ball. You know there's going to be some traffic somewhere. They've got to put it away and secure it as they try and get downfield. The Pittsburgh offense at the line to start their next drive. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game. And you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? Yeah, remember what the four-minute offense is, is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays, but it has to be plays that gets first downs and keeps the ball away from your opponent. But certainly throwing the ball is in the mix here. It certainly is. Just make sure that you're careful with it. And again, get those first downs and keep possession of the football. Here's Connor. They had three yards on first down, just one yard there. Well, with the fumble he had earlier, we, we know how key keeping the football is here. That fumble earlier probably at the forefront of his mind. Just hold on to this thing. It's also at the forefront of the mind of the guys who are trying to get the ball from him. And since they've seen him drop it on the ground before, they're doing everything possible to have him do it again. They need that turnover. A gain of 19 and picking up the first. Big hook up there, forced to throw it on third down. The connection's going to keep the drive alive and also keep the clock moving. Yeah, and from a defensive perspective, didn't get a sack, didn't knock the ball free, didn't break up the pass. The clock keeps running on you. You're in a dire situation now. Holding offense. So some holding over on the left side of that O-line. And I know for the guys trying to move those big defensive people, they'd love for them to stay in one spot. But they move around so quick and so fast that sometimes you just have to grab them. Here's Counter. And I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. This will be a two-yard loss on the play. And it'll make this a second and long. Throwing on second and long. Roethlisberger flushed to his right. And he's taken down, trying to do a little too much, getting outside of the pocket, and it results in a sack. Ziggy Ansah able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. So the sack, and now a third and long situation for the Steelers and Ben Roethlisberger. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. He'll rifle this one deep right side. It's caught inside the 25. We've got a one-score game with inside of two minutes remaining. So the Steelers with the football as 
as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Now Connor, and they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Stay on the ground with Connor again. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Now Ben going to give this one to Connor. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. It's first and goal and a late touchdown at this stage. Could officially salt this one away. And he's in. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. And Roethlisberger. A three-yard run as he kept it himself. And the Steelers, they broaden their lead. Well, it'd be real easy to say that they are firmly in control right now, but I'm looking at your face and I'm thinking I've got to be careful with that. Well, it's a two-score game. You're inside of two minutes. I think you can breathe relatively easily now. Yeah, you can, but still, you got to stay vigilant. Can't give up anything cheap and easy. That could put you in some jeopardy. And now Big Ben will lead the Steelers up to go for two. Connor going to try and run it, and he is into the end zone to bump the lead up two more. Needed a couple yards for the two-point try. They go to the ground game, and it works. And sometimes it's the exact right thing to do because a lot of teams play you for the pass, so you spread people out, decide to run the football, you often find good running lanes. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So Russell Wilson in the offense. Down by 15. A minute 37 remaining. They need two touchdowns and at least one two-point conversion mixed in there as well. Now Wilson. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. He was going for the tight end, Nick Vanette. And now it's second down. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Wilson now to throw again. Left side here taken in by Metcalf. 22 yards there, a first down. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Pressure comes and Wilson's gonna go down. Wilson trying to urge his guys to go faster and get set at the line. Another try after the first down sack. Wilson, Tyler Lockett was the target there. And it's third down. And the Seahawks on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This will be third and 19. Out of the gun, here's Wilson. He's gonna let it fly. And that'll wind up incomplete. Bold play call there. Now it's fourth down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Now on fourth down here, that pass knocked away and incomplete. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. down to none? Yes, exactly right. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Roethlisberger will hand to Connor. And a short gain there down to the 37-yard line. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. I guess the simple question, why not just take a knee there? I don't understand either why you would take any sort of a chance. We've seen it happen in the game of football. It doesn't matter whether you've watched high school, college, or the NFL. Some people get a little greedy, try to get that extra running play in, and it can backfire on them. And they just took a timeout with two seconds to go. This one obviously decided. 
Not sure they needed to take it, but we'll take it with them. Look at this, they're lining up to add three more, a little insult to injury here late in the game. This to make it a three-score game late. And the kick is good, so you wonder how this one might be remembered the next time these two teams meet. But until then, this game's over. Well, partner, even though my phone alarm failed me this morning and I missed our AM workout, we still made it through this thing together, didn't we? Well, you always know I need extra workouts just to keep oh, up with you, on. so it doesn't matter. But thanks for sharing a booth, and thanks for being our quarterback. Yeah, you're the quarterback. Always a pleasure, my friend. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gauden. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Steelers are winners as we say so long from Heinz Field.